Greetings YouTube, today is August the 16th, 2024 and my name is Marquita R. Ford and I am currently about to document some of the places that I went to when I first got to Las Cruces, New Mexico and I was homeless. Now I was homeless from June of 2023 up until August of 2023 and right now I'm currently standing at an intersection as well as a bus shed that I used to go to. Um, that is located behind Las Cruces, New Mexico High School. If you see the parking lot right here, uh, they're having some kind of event today. But anyway, I just wanted to record this bus shed and let you know how significant it was in my journey when I was homeless uh, last year. One thing about this bus shed is this was the main bus shed actually where the police would send the most gang stalkers, community organized harassers and things of that nature simply to just harass me and stalk me as well as several people would drive by and exhaust their plumes of smoke from their cars as well as burn rubber to try to make me sick while I would be sitting up at the bus sheds. Now I used to sit at various bus sheds uh, all night long and then I would go to the day shelter um, and where I would bathe and get a hot meal you know um, and things of that nature and, and actually sleep during the daytime so that I could sit up all night okay. So this happened to be one of those specific bus sheds. Also at this specific bus shed, this was the main one where my 90 plus year old adopted aunt, she would actually uh, answer the phone and talk to me and pray with me and just keep me encouraged while I was going through my trial and tribulation of being homeless. You know, it didn't matter what time it was, whether it was 1.30 or 2.30 in the morning, she always made herself available. And so I'm grateful to her, you know, for just encouraging me and, and helping me to maintain hope, you know, through that very trying time in my life so i'm going to pause this video right now and go to the next destination and i will be sharing information about that next destination y'all stay tuned here is the sonic that i mentioned in a previous interview relating to how kind the people were no matter who was the manager for that day or no matter who's working on the staff that day they always treated me with dignity and respect even though they knew I was homeless they never mistreated me or disrespected me so I'm thankful to them I would go in there and I would ask for a tall cup of water and they would give me a free tall cup of water and it was greatly appreciated and when my funds were permissible I would even sit down there in the shade and have a milkshake and a meal from time to time so yeah thankful to Sonic. Now right here you see a bus shed. At this specific bus shed this was the main one that the first responders, EMTs, fire trucks, things of that nature used to drive by and harass me all night long when I would be sitting at that specific uh, bus shed. Also the police, I noticed that right before any demonic activity would transpire, police or the sheriff would always drive by very slowly and then here comes the demonic activity always before or after they show up now you have the taco bell that i used to sit at sometimes and i would charge my electronics there when i was homeless and one day the first responders sent a mob in the police rather sent a mob in where there was an elderly perverted man who came and sat next to me very close to me trying to make sexual advances you know any any effort to stalk and harass me and to just try to ruin my day that's basically what most of the first responders did there were also firemen uh, that came in to just stalk and harass as well so yeah recording that now we're coming up on the storage facility that I used to use when I left El Paso and came to Las Cruces, New Mexico, this is the storage facility that I rented a unit at. And I had contacted one of the managers of this storage facility by the name of Teresa. And when I contacted her, I called her to pay for a storage facility, or pay for a unit rather. And I informed her that I was being stalked and harassed by the police in El Paso. And I also informed her that, you know, that is a form of domestic violence and domestic abuse. And she was well aware of what I was dealing with. However, by the time I got here, lies were told regarding me. My name was slandered. My character was defamed. Um, 
she basically had people, other other tenants who were renting the storage unit. She had them monitoring me and surveilling me, you know, and had lied, had them lying, saying that I was literally sleeping in my storage unit when I never did that. I used to go to my storage unit and I used to take canned foods and things of that nature, groceries, and um, also I would buy household things because I knew at some point that I was going to eventually get an apartment in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So basically, I would be in there doing that. Sometimes I would be in there studying the Bible and, clean, you know, just straighten it up, moving boxes around so that I could put more things in there. Also, there was one night when I couldn't afford to get a hotel and I went and I sat directly in front of this office right here and security came. And so security told me that I needed to leave. I didn't debate with them. I didn't get disrespectful or anything like that. I explained to them my situation and then I went ahead and I left, you know, no problem. Okay, this specific tree right here was actually a checkpoint. This is where the police used to sit. They used to sit up underneath this tree and they used to also have people in this community come sit up under this tree in various trucks and cars so that they could watch me at the bus shed that I just passed that was directly across from the Taco Bell. So I dealt with a lot of that as well. Okay, right here is a wall that I used to sit on some nights. And I used to just sit here and meditate on scripture and just spend time with God. Actually, on this street, it was not filled with community organized harassment as much. However, there was one man who actually followed me. He was riding a bike and he stopped and got off his bike and walk and try to stalk and harass and follow me. And um, I ended up walking down the sidewalk, leaving this wall, and I would go to the assisted living facility that's coming up. Also in this community, there was a woman who was kind enough to offer me a ham sandwich, uh, some juice, some fruit, and a hot shower. And so I'm thankful to her. I won't say her name because I don't want her to get stalked and harassed simply because she helped me when she did. But she does live in this neighborhood. Um, I no longer have contact with her. And so that's part of what the police do as well. They turn, anybody you become acquainted with, they turn them against you. And so, more than likely, that's what transpired after me becoming acquainted with her. Now, here you have the Masia Valley Hospice, which is actually the establishment that I went to the night that a man was following me and stalking me who was actually riding on his bike and things of that nature. So, I went to the door and notified one of the caregivers who came to the door. And once she came to the door, she actually sympathized with me and so she called the police and I sat right there on the bench I don't know if you could see it but there is a porch area uh, above where that white car is there's a porch area right beneath that tree and so I sat on the bench right there the police came when the police came they questioned me I told them what was going on and quite naturally they were not going to assist me you know they wanted to find out who I was what my birthday was and all those types of things but I knew they were not going to assist me because they were in on the gang stalking where they had people patrolling different neighborhoods and stuff like that and lying on me, slandering my name and stuff like that. So that's what I deal with there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here you have Baca Funeral Home and Crematorium. This is actually the funeral home where at one, one point I was sitting at the bus shed and this was like as soon as the triple digit weather kicked in, while I'm sitting underneath the bus shed and I'm just wringing wet, sweating like crazy, I decided to walk down the sidewalk to this funeral home. And once I entered the lobby, a lady came, I don't know if she was one of the directors or who she was, but she came and I requested to get just a cup of water. Now mind you now, once I walked into the lobby, I'm looking at the water fountain or the water dispenser and she tells me no. You know, and all I wanted was just a cup of water, you know, so I pray that she does better next time or whoever is working on that specific day. I pray that they do better in the future regarding it, just in case somebody may go in there wanting water. Uh, but she told me, no, I didn't get disrespectful. I just told her, you know, OK, we'll have a blessed day. And I walked on out. And that was that. Now, here's a church that I called regarding any type of resources they may have available, whether it's food or whether um, any type of shelter information they could give me. 
I contacted them and the receptionist answered the phone and she informed me that due to the donations being low at that time, they didn't have any food resources or anything like that, you know, but she was able to share some information regarding other agencies and places and shelter information and stuff like that um, as well. Uh, or different other churches that may have food and stuff like that. So yeah, and I informed her that I was aware of the day shelter and stuff like that. So yeah, that's what I experienced dealing with this church right here, you know. And once again, it was a kind interaction. So yeah, that is greatly appreciated as well. Here's a bus shed that I used to come to also that's surrounded basically by a lot of car lots um, on both sides of the street. There are several car, car lots. As you can hear the horn beeping from somebody who is uh, sexually immoral and just thirsty for attention from me. But in any event, this is a bus shed that I used to come to and I would sit up all night once again. Every now and again, I might take a cat nap at this one. And right across the street right here, where that truck is parked, there used to be a handful of cars that would pull up sometimes in the daytime and they would shine their possibly direct energy weapon headlights at me. Sometimes it would be one headlight on, one headlight off, things of that nature. But they would pull up, sometimes at night they would pull up with high beams right here in the driveway area just to harass me and, and to stop, you know, because they had been ordered, commanded by the police and uh, the corrupt church leaders as well. It's several of my enemies that I have disconnected from, whether they are a cursed relative that I disconnected from or whether they